Greetings, my name is Ryan Nitsch. I am a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me here today is Xiao Jin from Red Hat. Xiao Jin, say hi and give us a very quick description of your role. Hi, my name is Xiao Jin. I'm a Red Hat Manager Service Black Belt. So today, a lot of customers are talking to me about the ROSA service or the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS. This is a uh, jointly supported service but managed by Red Hat. So it's it's managed OpenShift. Yep. Well, very, very quickly, what is OpenShift? Why are customers interested in OpenShift? Yeah, OpenShift is an uh, um, uh, enterprise-grade Kubernetes platform. It's basically like, uh, it's, it's beyond just Kubernetes. It's providing you a great developer experience as well as an uh, um, uh, operational experience. Okay, uh, and with customers, when they're talking about OpenShift and AWS, uh, OpenShift touches a lot of AWS services, and there's a lot of integration, for example, when we're scaling and things. What are you seeing in terms of customers get to a best security posture and ways in which they can implement least privilege and, and, and sort of constructs around best security with OpenShift and AWS services? Yeah, so we basically have like, uh, uh, we leverage the STS, uh, uh, AWS security token services. So we uh, we uh, roll the cluster actually get uh, the least privilege and temporary token from uh, STS. Okay, so so we've got a ROSA cluster. Yep. And that ROSA cluster is going to talk to AWS's STS. Yep. Uh, STS is a token vending service, so every time the ROSA cluster wants to touch something like an AWS service. What would some of those AWS services be? Typically, what does OpenShift interact with from an AWS service point of view? Yeah, there are, there are a lot of AWS services we are integrated with that. For example, EB2. Uh, EC2. EC2, okay. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm assuming that is for the nodes as it scales up, scales down, or if it's provisioning new compute. And the EBS, I'm assuming, is for persistent volumes, those yes, sort of things. Yes, exactly. So in, in older OpenShift implementations, we used to have a, uh, an IAM user, and that IAM user had a set of keys, and, and these keys were rather static, they never changed. This yeah. really wasn't a, a, a temporary sort of environment. Also, these would not necessarily be least privileged. It would be one massive policy for the entire OpenShift cluster. Yeah. How does moving to STS change that? Yeah, so there are like two advantages of using STS. So number one is, uh, is STS give you a temporary token, and the other one is, uh, is giving you the least uh, privileged uh, So token. instead of one policy yep. on the older implementation, uh, here we would see multiple policies, and would I be correct in saying that now inside OpenShift, each of the components of OpenShift gets its own specific policy? Yeah, so inside of like uh, OpenShift, the ROSA service, uh, there are different kind of like uh, operator services, right? So each different, each services, they're going to have a, uh, their own role with, with like least privilege policy. Um, instead, just you have a big giant key with all the policies attached. So that's how we actually get at least the privileged uh, policy to be implemented. But the service would need to interact with STS. So there, there's a request yeah. process here. So yeah. is there any permission building blocks needed to actually talk to STS? Yeah, yeah. So Red Hat services, uh, um, when it's trying to create a ROSA cluster, is providing a OIDC provider. And this OIDC provider actually trusts with um, uh, IAM role. So there's a trust relationship between this OIDC and IAM role. And this role actually has a very least privileged policy. For example, only talk with uh, uh, EC2. 
and you definitely are going to have multiple AM rows in this case. And a particular service in Rosa uh, is able to assume um, the, this particular AM row and actually get a service account token from the OIDC provider. And in that case, the Rosa cluster or Rosa services is able to exchange uh, with STS to get a AWS session token. Okay, so the session token is yeah. really how long can I use that assumed role when it times out, yeah. I have to go through this whole request process again. Yeah. Right, uh, from a least privileged perspective, it's really all of these separate policies per server. So the OpenShift installer, for example, will have a set of permissions that it needs. The machine autoscaler has a separate set of permissions. Exactly. And all of those are interacting with STS by interacting through that OIDC provider, getting a service token, which yep. then gets me to a session token and allows me to assume that role and use it temporarily. Really. Yes. This is a very significant change from where we were a few years ago with a more static configuration. Is this something that you're seeing as a more popular, more common implementation? Yeah, yeah. For most enterprise customers, they prefer to use STS because this is a big deal for their security practice and it's temporary, it's least a privilege. I think uh, if if I look at the customers that I'm working with, STS and the other thing that is incredibly popular is private clusters using AWS Private Link. Uh, I would I would actually go as far as to say Private Link and STS are the two most common implementations. Yeah. And uh, this is now changing the way in which we build everything in OpenShift in general. As we bring new operators, new integrations, they're all going to be following this STS or temporary credential mentality. Yeah. So STS is, uh, is uh, enhanced security feature for authentication between all the operators or services inside of Rosa to AWS. In the next session, we can talk about what, what is private link, how we're going to make sure you know, the network is secured uh, in the private network. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for joining me. It's yeah, always a you. pleasure. And thank you for joining us.